Hello everyone, welcome back to the Printosaurus. I am Aaron and today we are doing something new. Well, at least new to the channel. We are working with the Algo Laser Pixie. It is a 10 watt class one laser engraver and it is pretty cool. And I'm gonna tell you all about it. So let's get into it. So Algo Laser sent the Pixie over for me to review. I figured why not? I haven't really worked with a laser engraver on my channel yet. So this is a perfect opportunity to take a look. Rest assured, this will be my opinion, not theirs. So let's get right into it. So the Algo Laser Pixie 10 Watt is a compact, fully enclosed class one laser engraver. It's designed for beginners, small businesses, and anyone who wants to get into engraving without giant setup. It ships fully assembled. It has a touch screen with Algo OS built into it, which means you can run the entire machine without a computer. Algo Laser has positioned the Pixie for three groups, small business owners who want a reliable compact engraver for shops or their workspaces, and also beginners and hobbyists who don't want a complicated setup, who want something that is plug and play and easy to start getting familiar with. Also families is what I feel like the Algo Laser Pixie is geared to because it is very user-friendly and kid-friendly with its safety features. So we're gonna talk about a couple of features that the Algo OS offers, and you can use all of these on screen. Uh, you just simply press the button for each one, uh, and that is Algo Sketch is what we're gonna start with. So I do have my tablet. You can download the Algo Laser app, uh, easy enough to get started on and connect to your printer. It will auto detect it uh, that you can see here. So we've got everything set up. We're going to click on the engraver tab and then we can scroll all the way down to draw. So this is pretty cool. We can draw whatever we want and this is what the kids really like. So we'll draw just a quick design here. We're gonna do a flower and then we can save this, hit next. And then now it is set up on our laser engraver. If I open this up here, you'll see that I can drag my picture around and it will actually move the tool head and align things so that uh, you know whatever material you're using so if we wanted to use I've got some wood over here we can take a piece of wood we can stick this in so we have that lined up so now I can drag my picture around I can make it larger I can make it smaller you can do whatever you need to do and the tool head will move so that you get this properly aligned. Uh, and then there's a little box here that you can hit. And when you do that, it is going to show you the outline of where that uh, engraving is gonna take place. And then you can continue to fine tune to get things aligned appropriately. So to not waste material, we're just gonna go to the bottom left corner. Okay, we look pretty good there. You can do image adjustments, anything that you need to do uh, to make your engraving turn out uh, the way you would want. So we're gonna roll with the defaults and just see what we end up with. You've got a configure tab as well. And in that tab, you can select dot matrix scan. You can do quality if you want highest. So we're gonna do medium just to see how things turn out. Uh, and then you can also control your machine if you need to. But we're gonna go ahead and hit start, which is the upper right hand corner. And then now we have a picture of what we are going to engrave. So we're going to close our cover. It has a little switch here. So it lets you know if the cover is not fully secured. It lets you know if it's open and it does stop the print as well, or the engraving rather, uh, if you lift that. So it's a nice safety feature to have. And because this is a class one laser, you're also greeted with a pen uh, that you have to enter uh, to even use this unit, which is another really important safety feature, especially if you're going to have children using this. So we're gonna go ahead and hit run and confirm. And then now we've kicked off our engraving. So we will see what that looks like. Today's video sponsor is PCBWay, pcbway.com. Jump online and take advantage of their Christmas sales. You can get 10 to 20% off 3D printing and materials. You can also take advantage of purple, matte, black, and pink solder masks. And there are some coupons, up to $435 worth of coupons. So take advantage of those. And if you need PCBs, well, PCBWay's got you covered for that too. So jump online and take a look, PCBWay, PCBWay.com. 
So our engraving is done. I'll show you a close up of it, but let's move on and talk about the other uh, pretty cool function that uh, you can do right on the screen. Uh, I'm gonna again show you in our program here on our tablet once I get back. So same deal, we're gonna control everything from our tablet, but you can do this from the screen. The next one we are gonna talk about is algo type. So algo type or algo text, uh, what it is is exactly like the name suggests. It allows you to type stuff out. Um, the advantage here is it has fonts that are optimized for laser engraving and we can basically manipulate those. So we're going to type in the Printosaurus here and we're going to change our font type. Let's find something cool. Um, I don't know. We'll just pick one, I guess. All right, let's do that one. And we can make this larger if we want to. Um, we can hollow our text if we want to. We can make it all capitalized by just hitting a button. Uh, we'll do that. And then you can also underline it. You could strike through it uh, if you needed to. So same deal. We have our, our fonts on here. We're going to hit next. So now we can position this thing. So we already have our one engraving. So I'm going to drag this up above that. We're going to make this a little bit larger. And then we're going to hit our button to make sure. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, and then I'm just gonna roll with the same settings again and see uh, how the default settings uh, turn out. So we hit next and we hit start and then now we hit run uh, and we're right back to engraving. All right, so we are completed. We've got our text done, we've got our sketch done and this is what we ended up with. Can we focus? There it is, look at that. The Printosaurus and a flower. Not too bad for a entry level laser engraver. So why don't we do something fun? Why don't we upload something and see if we can engrave it? We're gonna do my logo. We're gonna do the Printosaurus and let's see how it turns out. So for that, uh, we need to upload it to the machine. You can do that from the app or in the back, you have a USB-C port uh, that you can plug in. And then on the screen, you can navigate to and upload and then use everything on the screen uh, to set up that engraving. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Uh, you can see here, we have our USB stick in, we have our screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on projects. We're going to click on the USB stick and then you see here we have our logo. So that's what we're going to engrave. We're going to go ahead and hit engraving and now we're greeted with some options here. So what we need to do is we need to figure out if we want a border, uh, what kind of quality we want, our material selection. So I'm doing this on the leather. So simply scroll through here and find the material you're using. And now we're going to do our power. So we'll come over here to the auto parameters, which gives us a little one screen example of everything here. So I want something that's going to turn out pretty decent. So I'm going to go with 5.3K for speed and then 100% power. That doesn't look too bad, so we'll go ahead and confirm that. Now we're ready to move on to processing. So now the machine is going to home. Now here is the grid that you would see down here. Now what we can do is we can move our material around. And you can see it moves the tool head when we do that. We can hit this guy right here in the middle. And that is going to show us our indicator and whether or not our material or the engraving is going to be where you want it to be on your material. I feel like we're pretty close for our example. You can fine tune that as much as you need to. But for what I'm trying to show you, uh, it's not really necessary. So we're going to go ahead and hit start. And when this comes up, you're going to be greeted with a screen that has your job listing. So you'll get a percentage, you'll get uh, how much power the laser is running. Um, it's going to show you here what it is engraving. It's going to show you that it's working, uh, the material, you know, everything you need to see as this goes. So the on-screen example uh, is very informative. Uh, it's very easy to use. The stylus that they include works really well. Um, so that's nice as well. So we're going to let this thing run and hopefully we end up with a solid result. And so our leather engraving is done. Let's see if we settled on decent settings. And this is on a piece of leather. First time engraving something on leather. So not bad, not bad. 
It's time to talk about pros and cons. What did I really like about this unit? What didn't I like? Well, what I really liked is I like that it is a very safe unit. You have the passcode at the beginning. It's fully enclosed, which is nice, especially when the kids are using it. And there's no PC required, so it's easy enough to use a screen for Algo Sketch or text. And the kids, uh, again, didn't have any issues learning to use it. So it is very beginner friendly. Those are all things that I really liked. The material library had enough in it to at least get you interested. Uh, so that's good. I mentioned earlier that Minecraft was in there. So my son was ecstatic about Minecraft ornaments. So we did print and cut a couple of those. Really good initial results. And I'm sure those will get even better with some fine tuning, but our initial engraving that we did it looked really good, you know, like it's not the fastest laser engraver in the world. Um, the laser module I mentioned can't be replaced. So if you wanted a uh, three watt or a five watt or 10 watt, depending on which one you got, you would have to buy a whole new unit to upgrade to. Um, the enclosed design does have some limitations. You do have adjustment up, um, but you know, it would be cool to have just a slightly larger footprint. The touch screen works really well. They market this as only using, uh, you know, you don't need a computer so you can use just the touchscreen. But with that said, it would be cool if the touchscreen was a little bit larger because you know you can fine tune things, you get a little more detail with your algo sketch drawings and whatnot. Um, it's, you, it's easier on the tablet. So with this being marketed as not needed, uh, it would be nice to just have a slightly larger screen. All in all, Algo Laser, it's a good product. It worked well. Everything they said uh, worked as advertised. So I don't think you're going to go wrong there. Uh, pricing is listed here. Thanks for watching The Printosaurus. I am Aaron again, and I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And we are going to get back to some exciting 3D printing projects coming up. I've got the H2C, I've got the Snapmaker U1. We are going to look at them independently, and then we are going to put them head to head and see uh, you know, what, which one may work better for who. So stay tuned for that. That is coming up next. See you guys.